Okay, Mark chapter 14. After two days was the feast of Passover. So Passover is coming. So we're looking at a time that um, Abed, the month of Abed, Passover, and the unleavened bread. Now, what happened is Passover was separate and unleavened bread. By this time, the Jews had just put it in one big holiday, a holy day. And see how holy, where it's become a holiday, not a holy day. Because I watch what I say when I say holy and holidays. And I said holiday, not holy day. Because the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him, Jesus, by crab and put him to death. Well, what happened to the day they, they come right Jesus? You say, what are you talking about? The Passover lamb? The lamb that was slain to, to free them from the servitude in Egypt? Behold, the lamb of God which take away the sin of the world prescribed by John the Baptist and they're going to take the lamb. They're going to slay him. All according to Isaiah 53. But they want to kill him. And they're not acting to anything of scripture. They're not saying, well, you know, the scrolls say we're to take the Son of God and we're to crucify. That's not what they're saying. We hate him. And the fact is, we try to catch him in his word. We try to nab him. We try to set traps. We're going to try it again. Haven't they ever learned you cannot catch Jesus? But we're going to do it by craft. And it's interesting that if you were to add words to craft, witchcraft, But they said, oh, okay, okay, I forgot. It's it's a it's a holy day, not on the feast day. Okay, let's let's be right with Jehovah. Let's get right with God. It's not a holiday. It's 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 a holy day. At least there be any uproar among the people. Oh, who cares what Jehovah says? If we do what we want to do on the it's never called holiday or holy day in the Bible. It's called a feast day. They're called holy days, not holidays. So their main thing is, if we do it on the anniversary of the birth of nation called Israel coming out of Egypt, The people will get upset and they'll turn on us. Because the people have already rejected the high priest and the scribes for this man named Jesus. In John, they've already prescribed to make him a king. Because Jesus had a food kitchen and was serving food. John chapter 6. And the fact is, they missed the whole thing about the bread of heaven. Where the Catholic Church takes John chapter 6, and they missed the whole attitude of the bread, of the of the curse of their mount and their wafer. It's amazing how you can take one portion of scripture, and depending who you listen to, depending what religion, pretending what church, what, what man is up there, what woman's up there, though she shouldn't be, is saying how perverted you can do with the scriptures. So the, the, the chief priests and scribes said, not what's right, not what be listen, you know what would you know what would approve Jehovah? Let's look at it like this for a moment. If you take my son, you you you, you torture him, you, you, you beat him, you, you put him through all these things, and you put him on the cross and you crucify him. And then you bury him. I'll resurrect him three days and three nights. That would have pleased Jehovah. Because I'm telling you, by the time you get to Acts chapter 1, the end of the gospel, where Jesus extends to the heaven and is at the right hand of the Father, I can look at the Father going to the Son and say, well done. 
By the way, God never says I'm proud. You know, we, we, we just had this great pride month and all the people against the pride and all that. And, you know, we, we are not to have pride. And you get a preacher up there. You get a pastor up there. You get a Sunday school teacher up there. I'm so proud of my church. I'm so proud of my children. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of that. You're a sinner. Just as much as the transistites, just as much as the sodomites and their pride. Pride is one word. So, they don't like Jesus. <coughs> Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus has taken the crowds because he's taught them the truth. Later on, Paul is going to speak to a bunch of Christians. He's going to say, have I become your enemy because I've spoken the truth? That's what my life is in many churches. I've become your enemy because I've spoken the truth. So they're not worried about it being a holy day. They're not worried about it with Jehovah. They're worried about, and listen, you don't upset the, the, the Jew. You don't upset the Middle Eastern. And you don't upset the Asian. Because this thing that do or die goes a long time. It took atomic bomb to be dropped on Japan, a little island nation, for them to end the war. If we didn't pull out of Korea, if we didn't pull out of Vietnam, we'd be still fighting. Being in Bethany, and Bethany means house of uh, figs. House of figs. There we go. Here's this thing in Israel again. The fig tree. House, Beth, and a fig. And in the house of Simon the leper. Now, you got to get your Bible correct because many Baptist churches don't. Say, how come you say things like that? Because I'm here to tell you what's the truth. All right? Let's take Matthew. We're going to take the scriptures. We're, we're not going to, okay, we're done. Look at that. Look at all the things I said is wrong. Verse 6, Matthew 26, verse 6. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany, house of Simon the leper, there came unto a woman having an alabaster box, we'll look at that mark, very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at me. Did you get that? All right. And the disciples were indignation, anger, stream anger. All right. Now, now the problem is when you go to John, the Gospel of John, we have a problem with some Baptist churches. John chapter 12, verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, the other one's two days. This one's six days. Did you get that? Did you read your Bible. Or did you? Okay, I did it, for, did it for today. Look, God, mark it on my book. I read the Bible all the way through it every year. Yeah, but did you study the Bible? I'm supposed to study too. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be right, not to be ashamed, right to divine the word and truth. And let's put your pastor to shame. Let's put your Sunday school teacher to shame, because I have. Six days before the Passover came to Bethany. Okay? Bethany, house of figs, right? Remember? Where Lazarus, was Lazarus leprous? No. Is Lazarus Simon? No. Which had been which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Okay? That made a supper, Martha served, but Lazarus was one that sat at the table with it. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spicknard, very costly, anointed the feet of Jesus. Is your feet the head? You know, there are some churches I have been in that have taken Matthew 26, they've taken Mark chapter 14, and he says, Mary. 
They, now go back to Mark 14. And they'll say Mark 14. Well, Mary, have you heard that? You ever heard that? Mary. Mary took that box and said, what? No, it's not Mary. Well, we don't even know what her name is. Let's, let's give that much credit. In Bethlehem, the house is Simon, not Lazarus. The leper. Simon is a leper. <laughs> well, we come a long way from Leviticus 13, 14. He was supposed to be outside the gate. Unclean, unclean. He's got a house. Simon has leprosy. Lazarus was dead. <laughs> As they sat at me. Okay, they both sat at me. There came a woman. All right, Mary and John is a woman. This is a woman. Now, we got to say that today because people don't know who women are. They don't know the difference anymore between a male and a woman. I'll tell you, I, I know the way to tell you a man and a woman. It's a perfect thing. You go into a bedroom, close the door, turn on all the lights, get yourself a room, a mirror length of a wall. Get naked, look in that mirror, and you'll find out if you're a male or female. If you say other than your biological parts, missing or unmissing, you say something else, then you need to be locked up. Go ahead, take the tape, say you heard me say it, because you're not safe. And I only say that because if the Lord tarries 10 to 20 years, these people are going to be running, cap, uh, running the capital. All right, so here's a woman having an alabaster box, which is a white stone box. Very precious. Anoint ointment with spikenard. Now, Matthew just said anointment. Mark says spikenard. Spikenard is used for a perfume. It's used in medicine, and it's used in, in, in cooking. Very precious. It's costly. It's hard to get. This not this is not mustard. This is not pepper. This is a very costly ointment. She break the box and poured it on his head. Head, not feet, like John. And there were some that had indignation, Matthew, within themselves. In other words, they didn't have it openly. They got mad inside themselves. They didn't say anything. And said, within themselves. You ever say anything to yourself? No one else heard you? You have extra comments that unheard to all? Well, they said within themselves, why was this waste of ointment made? Okay, it's not the box. Some people make the effort to the box. But it's the ointment that's costly. I mean, you may have a bottle of perfume. And if it fell and cracked on the floor, well, who cares about the glass bottle? Just put it Put that in the garbage. Make sure no one cuts himself. But oh, the ointment, the, 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 the volume that was in it. You may have some caviar. And this is a jar. Falls off the shelf. Oh, the expensive caviar. Who cares about the container? You know, you may have, you may have the most cheapest car ever. But if your son or daughter, if your spouse is in that car, they're precious. They cracked up the car. How's my family? How are they doing? So she breaks the box. The ointment goes on the head of Jesus. At this meal. Somebody is angry. That's what indignation is. What is the waste of this ointment? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence 
earlier scriptures of Matthew and Mark, we see that that 300 pence is almost a year's pay. Remember when they were out working in the vineyard and every man got a penny a day? Pence is penny. It's funny how that, that's the name of the vice president. 365 days. $65 short. 65 days short of a full amount. And he, the value is it. So the container and the mount would show forth the value. Never mind who it was used for. And we have already have seen a widow put out before the disciple just two pence. Make a farthing. And somebody said, well, it's not much. Now, look how much. And it's a waste. You're not putting enough in the collection plate. But she gave all she had. Well, that expensive stuff, you wasted it. And have been given to the poor, a Democrat. Rise from the poor, from the rich, give to the poor. Socialism. Communism. And they murmured against her. What a waste. Who does she think she is? She interrupted the dinner. Dumped it on his head. You could have gave that to the poor people. They could take it down to the public stop and got money for it. And Jesus said, uh-oh, let her alone. Why trouble you her? They're giving her a hard time. She has wrought a good work on me. For ye had the poor with you always. He heard. But they weren't speaking out loud. They weren't speaking to others. They were speaking within themselves. And Jesus says, I heard what you said. He sees you when you sleep and he sees you when you're awake. For ye had the poor with you all. So you're never going to end the poor. That's the mouth of God. That's the one that raises them from the dunghill. That's the one that makes them poor. That's the one who makes them rich. That's the one who made us. He says, you're going to have the poor always. Because there are some people who can't handle money. And the moment they get it, they blow it. There are people who get money. And then, you know, disaster, financial disaster. And they're broke. Listen, this world's headed head into a financial disaster. We're coming to where there will be no middle class people. You're going to be rich by the mark or you're going to be poor by not receiving the mark. Whensoever ye will, whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. Right, you can help the good people. You can help the poor people. All right? So Jesus never said don't help the poor people. You better make sure they're poor. In Daytona Beach, Florida, you better make sure that panhandle needs money. Because I will challenge you. You really hungry? Here's a restaurant in here. I'll go in here. Here's a convenience store. I'll get you a sandwich. I'll get you a big drink. I'll get you chips, and if you want a dessert, come on in. Can't you give me the money now? No, I don't carry money. I'll go in there and get you a sandwich. 
By the way, when you do something like that, carry a black magic marker. You say, what are you talking about? So you take your black magic marker. I had one here. You take your black magic marker. You know those, those codes on the bottles? You know, the UPC code. Do that. If you're going to buy them water or soda or sand, cross off with a black magic marker the UPC code. You say, why is that? Because they can't go in the store and exchange it. They can't go in the store, well, I don't really need this. Can I have the money? They've done it. They've taken your good sense and they've gotten money to go get their drugs or whatever. Do that. Okay? So Jesus said, help the poor. I'm telling you what the Bible says. You be wise. But me, you have not always. He said, listen, he's already told you, I I'm going. I'm going. Two more days, they're going to kill me. Five days, I'm going to be resurrected. Forty days after that, I'm going home. And I'll be back for the church. If you want to physically do something for me, now is the time. I mean, physical is, here, Jesus, take it. I can't do that to Jesus today. I can't put nothing in Jesus' hand. Because his hands are not here like they are there. I could do good things for the Lord. She has done what she could, like the woman with the two pence. That was all her that was all her income. She's come afford to anoint my body to the bury. So let's let's take let's run to the crucifixion day. We know we know the scriptures. They crucify him, they hurry up and take him down, they hurry up, put him in Joseph Martha's tomb. Because the Sabbath day is coming and we're in a great rush. We're in a hurry to do everything. Everything's half done. The women are making the spices at home, waiting for the end of the Sabbath to come and anoint his body. They don't even know how they're going to run the, roll the stone away. This woman comes up and starts anointing his body for his burial because she knows they're not going to do it properly. Very I say to you, wheresoever this gospel, look at that gospel, look at that good news. And that's not the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I had a fool one time, well, there's only one gospel. What are you going to do there? How are you going to get the death, burial, and resurrection? Because look what he said. Well, it's a death, burial, and resurrection. Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached, this gospel. He's sitting there having dinner. He ain't dying. Not that day. There's the gospel, the good news. Gospel means good news. There is the gospel, and he has not died. What are you going to do with that? I can't remember the guy's name. I, I, if I remembered his name, which I don't remember, I would say his name and say the guy is a fool. But wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, not just the Gentiles, not just the Jews, both, not just the Christians, the whole world. This also shall be, this also that she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Now, let me ask you a question. Now, we just did it. How many churches have mentioned this woman? And this message Jesus just said is to be preached to the whole world. I want me how many pastors out there, how many Sunday school teachers out there, how many preachers out there have never touched this subject of this one? She's left her home. 
I've done at least twice in my ministry. We've been to the Bible right now twice. Mark 14 twice. And I've done what Jesus told me twice, at least. Now, going back up. Verse 3, she breaks the alabaster box, but gave him a nose is very itchy with his holes. Alabaster box is broken. It's not the alabaster it's the ointment of spikenard, or spikenard, I do not say. And they're filled with intense anger. Verse 4, why was the waste of this ointment? The waste of the ointment. Okay? And they murmur against her. Jesus says, 14.6, it's a good work on him. They said it's a waste. This is the company of Jesus. Okay? You know there will be people in your church. There will be people you know that are Christians. Or profess to be Christians. And when you give something to Jesus. Whatever it is. When you do that for them. Why are you doing that? That's silly. Meanwhile, they give their stuff to a team, to a movie, to cruises, to to unclean rats. And the little thing is all you got or something that is very valuable. And you break it. Because you know that Jesus died for you. Today. I'm looking at for the Christian. She doesn't know. She knows the death is coming. But she hasn't seen it. She knew it. She believed in the death. The burial. Not, as he, not even his disciples saw that coming. She wasn't there at Calvary. She wasn't there at the garden of, of the of the tomb. She she was told by God, "You bring this spice because that spice is needed for a dead body." She grabbed her alabaster box. She walked into this place. I don't know if she belonged there or not. She broke it open and put it on the head of Jesus. And the company of Jesus. Sitting down having a meal with Jesus. That's a waste. And friend, I have heard that from many professing Christians. That's a waste what you're doing. I know the world will say that. The world is expected to say it, but not the Christians. I had a pastor one time. And we had. Scripture, 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 bumper stickers on our car. And we had, in Florida, we had a legal handicapped parking placard. He had one handicapped parking place. And this happened to be by the fellowship hall with our car in Ormond Beach, Florida. And I told you so. He told me, he said, you know, we got biggies coming. Can you move your car? Why? Well, I don't want them to see that. I said, I, I pulled the keys out of my pocket. I said, you want the car moved. You move it yourself. That guy took my keys and moved my car. Having bumper stickers on your car is a waste. Preaching on the streets, that, 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 you know, you, you drive people away. Supporting this missionary. Supporting missionaries. Knocking on doors, giving out gospel tracts. That's a waste of time.
Oh, my little doodads. My little fun time stuff. Yeah. You know what it all comes down to? With that widow woman and this woman here. Notice they're both unnamed. I'm going to tell you, this person who got mad, he's going to be named tomorrow night, Lord will. They don't have a name. But I guarantee you, I don't know if they were resurrected when the bodies came out of the tomb, but I guarantee one day they will be in heaven. And they'll be known. I think we'll be able to sit down with this woman and say, well, what was it like? I wonder how God blessed this woman with her spook note. I wonder how he blessed that widow with the two mites. And we will see the end of the person that gets upset. Be careful who you get. I mean, listen, the devil could get in your flesh can get something happened in church, you get upset. Very be careful. You better be careful. Rejoice with them that rejoice. 